Hello, everyone. Welcome to Talking Logistics, where we have conversations with thought leaders and newsmakers in the supply chain logistics industry. It's my great pleasure to welcome today's program, Mark Ford, who is Chief Operating Officer at Blue Grace Logistics, and Prasad Galopoli, who is founder and CEO at Trucker Tools. And today we're going to talk about beyond technology, the importance of relationship building. Now, technology tends to hog the spotlight in the logistics industry, certainly, you know, in, in, in recent years. But anyone who's been in the industry for a long time understands that relationships with shippers, carriers, and employees matter too. But is that still the case uh, with all of this digital transformation happening in, in the industry today? Um, you know, is, uh, uh, does technology play a role in building these relationships? And is it now part of the value proposition, part of the business case of investing in technology? Well, those are the main questions we're gonna address in today's episode. And it's great to have Mark and Prasad on the program to share their insights and advice on this topic. So Mark, Prasad, welcome to the program. Thanks for having us. Hey, nice to be here. Thanks, Adrian. So Mark, let's let's get started with you. And like I always like to do when we bring on a new guest, you know, be, before we dive into this topic of, you know, relationships and the importance of relationships in the industry, um, I'm sure there are a lot of people that are already familiar with Blue Grace Logistics, but in case some folks that are listening in today are, are not, uh, why don't you Tell us a little bit about Blue, uh, Blue Grace Logistics, your operations there, and, and kind of your role there. Sure. Blue, Blue Grace, I mean, as most people do know, and, and we're foundationally an LTL organization. That's where you know, Blue Grace, the roots came from, was a, the mode equals LTL. Uh, my background is truckload. So, you know, as they started getting more into the managed logistics piece, which will play a role in some of the other questions, I'm sure that, that pop up here. Uh, you have to be able to offer full service. And so, you know, the truck, truckload was something that they did pretty much as kind of an add on. Uh, and they wanted to become, you know, experts in that. And so that's kind of where I, where I came on board. And, you know, that was the attractive piece of me joining this organization is traditionally I was in very large companies, some from the, the startup uh, through, you know, uh, to large scale. And some of them were acquisitions, but Primarily, the LTL was kind of an afterthought. It was mostly the focus was truckload. And I think from a, from a standpoint of what made Blue Grace attractive was their foundational piece was something that was a lead for a lot of customers. And then building the truckload was something that I was familiar with. So if you combine those two things together, uh, that, that was a very, that, that was a, a big reason why I came here. And my duties here are just really kind of building that piece out. Um, you know, I focus on all things, building a scalable execution side of the truckload product itself. So if you can't execute on the shipments, you really aren't, aren't going to have success in, in building out something that, you know, a product that somebody wants to actually purchase from you or use you for. Uh, and so, and, and that obviously just doesn't, uh, is not just restricted to the sales apparatus engine, but also the, the technology that's involved both internally for our, our, our internal employees to use and externally for our vendors and carriers to interact with, with Blue Grace. Yeah, no, great, great overview. And, and certainly, you know, when you look at, you know, all of the, especially today, all of the challenges going on in, in transportation, you know, truckload, LTL, parcel, ocean, just about every mode has got its unique, uh, you know, <laughs> challenges with, you know, uh, constraints and uh, and as well as uh, rate pressures and, and, and so forth. Um, so, you know, it's got the, you know, that, you know, that sort of spells out why technology is important to be able to, re, you know, address those challenges that come up, you know, as efficiently as possible. But it also is, you know, we can make the case that is why relationships are also so important to help everyone navigate, you know, through this environment. So, you know, we, we often say that, you know, logistics is, is, a, is a people business, right? A relationship business. Mm -hmm. So I guess to, to kind of get it started with this conversation now, you know, is that still the case despite all of this technology and, and automation that, you know, logistics service providers and companies like Blue Grace uh, are adopting and, and why are relationships still important? I mean, absolutely relationships are still important today. However, if you, if you don't have the technology to partner with the relationship, uh, you know, our business has morphed into something that you, you want to create efficiencies and carriers are the same way. There are certain things that they don't like to do either. The re, it starts with the relationship, but over time, um, you know, that relationship can, can kind of soften if you don't have the, you know, the supplemental pieces of, uh, of making their jobs easier too. So, 
Yeah, absolutely. Relationships and any kind of a, any sales product that you're, that you're in, relationships do matter. Uh, and especially in the markets that we're in, you know, it, it's not to say that we're always going to get the best price from a relationship carrier, but you can get the capacity. Because I think it's also fair that when the markets are, are driving, whether it's north or south, from a rate perspective, that you pay the carrier a fair rate. And I think the relationships help us keep the capacity in house and at least allow us to have the discussion before we, you know, have to go to the market and use carriers that we don't have a lot of familiarity with. So absolutely. And, you know, from, a, you know, from what they're looking for uh, in, in building those relationships is, you know, the, they're looking for someone that can actually help them fill their network and fill it in a way that they don't have to worry about keeping some of their trucks on the road on consistent type of freight. And I think from, from our perspective with that managed logistics product that we have, you can only access that freight through us. And so when carriers understand that, it's a different type of discussion. And I think that that's what carriers look for is we don't just want to deal with companies that operate from a transactional aspect. We want to have some sort of consistency where we know you're going to have this, this specific type of freight uh, on these days. And we we're familiar with where it's picking up and where it's delivering because it's important for them and their driver retention standpoint too. So, you know, the relationship starts with, hey, we have this type of freight, but it also bleeds down into how you operate and how easy it is for you to do business with and how, how that helps them and their employees actually interact with, with a company like Bluegrass. Yeah, a lot, a lot of great, you know, points there. I mean, you, you talked about, um, you know, you talk about that it's more than just the short term. That's really about thinking more, you know, longer term. You're talking, you talked about, you know, part of that relationship is, you know, how easy is it to work with you, right? Um, you, you know, and particularly when, when, you know, there might be, uh, you know, upswings or downswings in, in the market, you know, and, and that's where the rubber meets the road. You know, I think that there's also another dimension um, to, to the relationship is even with, with your employees, right? When we talk about make it easier to work with or make yeah. it easier to, you know, uh, execute, you know, these, these processes, you know, employees have, you know, a role in this too, right? Absolutely. I mean, it's, you know, when you look at how fragmented our, our business is, and if, if, if you know anyone that's ever been, you know, in a 3PL and that's worked on the, on the carrier side of the business, you know, it, it, it's, it could become, it, it's a difficult job. And if you don't give your internal or you don't show your internal employees that you're working on making their jobs more enjoyable, your relationships aren't going to matter because then they're consistently changing and carriers want consistency. They want to know they have someone on their side. So if you're just focused on the external relationships, but you're not doing anything internally to supplement that and to, to give your, your internal people the ability to, you know, take advantage of some of those technology or technological resources, then they're going to have a hard time facilitating the relationship on their side. And, and you really kind of need that. Yeah, I mean, I know that uh, there's always been, uh, you, you know, two schools of thought, you know, you, you have the Jeff Bezos from Amazon that talks about, you know, obsess, you know, obsess over the customer, right? And then you have others, I believe it's Costco that says, you know, obsess over the employee and, and the customer, you know, the customer satisfaction will come along with it, right? So if you've got happy employees, productive employees, you know, uh, it follows that, um, you know, they will focus on the right things to make it, you know, to make uh, the relationships with the customers, whether it's shippers or, or as well as the carriers to be, you know, uh, very productive relationships uh, as well. Uh, Prasad, uh, you know, there's, there's another type of relationship uh, that is important as well. And that is the, the relationship between, you, you know, technology companies such as yourselves with, you know, customers such as, you know, uh, Blue Grace. I mean, how have these relationships changed over time and, and what's needed to build a, a strong vendor client relationship you know um, adrian what what you brought in as a third angle right the relationship between a 3pl and a technology player right um that is you know has become a huge uh, focus in today's world now you know if you take go back a few steps right um take decade ago right or or more than that the relationship between a vendor and a 3PL used to be more of a distant relationship where a vendor would perform uh, two types of tasks. One is either they provide a product 
either the, the three PL would like to buy that or not, right? Or the second part of the relationship was most of, mostly we would do customization as you need, tell us what you need, we'll just do it, right? It was almost a services based, right? In both these cases, um, <clears throat> there was no real alignment with these two parties together. It was mostly, here is my product, these are the goals, either you buy that as it is, or here, tell me what you want, I'll build it up, I'll charge you per hour. Right? I don't care what you want, you want me to stand upside down, we'll do it, right? Um, <clears throat> in both these cases, they were running as parallel tracks, not as joint, right? Now in today's world, that same relationship has become a partnership. The same way that Mark said about his relationship with his employees and carriers, it's, it has become more of a relationship now where vendors, technology vendors align with three PLs more in terms of a give and take, let's see what you want in the next two years. Is this the direction my product needs to go? And kind of like blending it, let your customers, three PLs shape the shape, you know, the future of this product, technology vendor shapes the product. So together they're building it together. Um, it has become more of that uh, collaboration uh, call it three leg race. You know, we can call it any names, right? But that's what they're they're playing now. You know, I, I love that. As you were talking, it reminded me. You know, a, a good friend of mine, uh, Kate Vitasek from University of Tennessee. Uh, you know, she's done a lot of writing and written books on uh, on vested uh, relationships, and uh, so I highly recommend her books. Uh, but she she uh, she wrote a blog post several years ago that we republished on Talking Logistics, or I I put my spin on it as well, but she, she kind of gave a new definition for RFP, right? So instead of an RFP being a, re a request for a proposal, an RFP being a request for partnership or a request for partner. And if you kind of adopted that definition, how would that RFP look, right? What things would you look for or would you list in that RFP, that request for partnership uh, document? And, and I think, you know, what you just said is uh, uh, aligns with you know, some of the things that she talked about, we're really thinking a little bit more longer term, you're not thinking about transactionally what you want to do together, you're really, you know, aligning your strategy, aligning your, your metrics and objectives, you know, together, and, uh, you know, your success is their success and, and, and vice versa. So, so I think what I've been seeing in the industry, and you're right, it's, it's been happening now for a few years, is this movement towards companies really looking at their technology vendors, not as vendors or something to buy something from, but as you know, a, a partnership, and then what does that mean if they kind of change that perspective um, when uh, you know selecting who they want to work with? Um, so, so Mark, and I know you touched upon this a little bit, but maybe you can expand. Uh, I guess the question is, you know, does technology help in building and strengthening relationships with shippers, carriers, and, and employees? And if so, in, in what ways? Well, the the basic principle behind what being a third party logistics kind of baby, sometimes you're the furthest person away from the data, right? So you're, you, you rely on the data that you're receiving from the customers, you receive, you're relying on the data you receive from the carriers. And really what you're looking for is how can we access that data and make it easy for you to do business? So in, you know, for an example, tracking. So you know, drivers don't like to be you know, they, they don't like to receive tracking calls. Dispatchers don't like to receive tracking calls, but we have to have that data. And, and so how, how do you actually go about getting the data, but making it easy and giving carriers the option on how they actually, you know, transmit that data to you. So whether you, you know, have a, an app or uh, whether you're API'd into their, their web portal because they actually have the data there um, it's just the options. And, and usually phone call is, is, the, is the, the, the one that they'll give you the most resistance on because they're busy, they're doing other things. So they don't want, you know, they don't want to be bothered. So, you know, that, that's an example of, of, of kind of one of the things. And then obviously there's, you know, as technology becomes more um, an inherent skill of, of, of kind of the new generation, there are just certain people that want to deal with their transportation partners via technology. There are some people that don't want a lot of human interaction for anything, whether it's booking it, whether it's tracking it, whether it's you know, transmitting their paperwork, whether it's getting paid, they just wanna be able to do things on their own terms. And I think that you know, what we're kind of building most of our 
um, you know, technology or designing most of our technology around or who we're partnering with is how do we solve those problems for, you know, our people, whether it's a shipper or whether it's a customer or whether it's a carrier. And, and that's kind of what we're focused on. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, just to paraphrase a little bit of what I heard you say is, you know, what technology helps to do is kind of eliminate some of that friction, some of that latency that, um, you know, uh, slows down the interactions, right, and the processes that take place between um, shippers, carriers, and, and logistics, you know, uh, service providers. And, uh you know, the way the relationships are managed today or, the, the, you know, there's different levels to it. You know, part of it is you want as much lights out as possible and human interaction as possible because the speed of the business is just so quickly, right? I mean, you, you got to get shipments out there are deliver by dates that you have to hit and so forth. And if there's a lot of phone calls or manual processing taking place, that just complicates, you know, being able to meet those more stringent service requirements. And that can fray relationships if you don't uh, are able to, to meet that. Uh, but on the other hand, we all know that exceptions occur and, and that's really where the people should be, you know, focused on is on those exceptions and, and managing it, um, you know, as effectively as possible when the automation is not able, you know, breaks down because of whatever the, the case might be, right? You are exactly right. I mean, managing by exception is a, is a perfect, uh, that's a perfect segment into that. You know, that is exactly you know back in when i first was in this interview you had to call every carrier you had to call every dispatch on, on every single shipment multiple times in the progression of that shipment and today we can you know on at least 50 percent of our freight we can manage by you know exception because you know we have the information readily available and and so that is, you know, that's exactly, that's a perfect way to put it up there. And, and that's exactly, you know, um, the benefit of having some of these technology platforms that, that are available to us. Yeah. Well, and the reality is, I mean, you're a growing company. Many, many companies in this industry are growing. You know, the, the, the amount of freight out in the industry is growing. It's just impossible to scale your business and scale your operations if, if you know, you didn't move into this more automated technology driven, you know, environment. Uh, I think that's just the, the, just, just the reality in order to be able to you know, manage your growth, you know, uh, effectively. Um, so Prasad, I mean, as, as you're, um, you know, receiving uh, requests for partnerships from uh, technology, comp uh, from, you know, prospective customers, I mean, are you seeing relationship building being part of the value proposition or the business case that, um, you know, companies are putting together for, for the types of solutions that you offer? I mean, is, is it, is it coming up with conversations that you're having with prospective clients? Um, so, you know, I like the way you converted RFP into, you know, instead of request for uh, proposals, it's a request for partnerships. Um, one of the key things that we've noticed in the last couple of years and becoming more prominent is um, when customers like Mark, right, uh, Blue Grace, when they, you know, when we first spoke to Mark, the, the questions that he asked or completely different compared to, you know, if we were to do this 10, 15 years back, right? It's not where our platform is today, right? It's not where, where our technology is today. The questions that, you know, uh, leaders like Mark have asked us is, where are you going next? What's on your roadmap? That's the first question that people are asking. The second question that our customers, 3PLs ask us is, how much of an influence do we have on your roadmap? And they are very, you know, transparent about this. They say, you know, this is your product. You're driving this, right? We're not trying to manage that for you, but we want to see how much of our feedback goes into your roadmap. It is, I mean, I, I, this is a day and night difference between where we were 10 years back to where we are today. It, this is such a, an immense, um, I would call it force, you know, let it be the, the new direction of our industry. But this is the change that we are looking for all these years, right? Our customers, 3PS and brokers asking us, how much of an influence do we have on this roadmap? Because you're solving the, the problems for us. We want to be able to, you know, share our frustration or our direction or issues with you. Uh, you know, um, the same goes with, with Mark and I, right? We spoke about a lot of things. He actually helped us shape one of our uh, our products. You know, one of his his main pet peeves is is you know receiving calls and uh, from various parties. And he said, 
why can't we solve this problem through broker advantage, right? Um, likewise, a lot of our customers actually created that product for us. In many ways, when we spoke to the customers, they said, hey, we, you're solving one part of our, our, our uh, freight. Why can't you help us on the other side of it? Um, that is the direction, right? I mean, we should be able to build these products you know, block by block together to solve the issues of this industry. And that to me is the biggest change that we are seeing in today's world compared to 10 years back. And so those vendors and brokers that adopt to this new film mindset are the ones that are moving forward rather than those that are, you know, the old school, right? Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, you talk about really the, the pace of innovation and, and the ability to um, participate in that innovation, um, you know, roadmap and in the innovation uh, process. And, you know, I remember, yes, you're right. I mean, when I got started in the industry, you know, 20 plus years ago, I mean, one of the biggest frustrations I would always hear from clients of any kind of enterprise software solution was, you know, we've got this idea for, a, we, we got this need for a capability or we've got a particular issue. Uh, we submitted to the enterprise software vendor and they said, well, you know, um, it's going to be six months to a year before we get our next release out. And, you know, if they weren't a large customer, maybe their input was at the bottom of the list and maybe it would take a year or two before that feature of that capability, you know, was added. And I think, you know, part of it was just the nature of the architecture of the, the way the technology was developed and released back then. But I think when you're in this environment today where it's cloud driven, where it's, you're talking about web services and, and it's architected for the, for the cloud and so forth, um, the pace of innovation is key. And I can see how that is, is kind of an important factor, particularly for the logistics industry, which is changing so rapidly. And there are, you know, logistics service providers like, uh, you know, Blue Grace, you know, they're getting, uh, uh, you know, requests or, or, or uh, you know, wish lists from their shipper clients, as well as their carrier partners. And they're then have to communicate that to you because say, hey, you know what, this is what our customers are expecting of us. And you know, we need to, uh, uh, you know, be able to innovate, you know, as rapidly as possible to, to, to meet Yeah, that. and Adrian, if I could add one thing to that, it's almost like, you know, we're all running a, a, you know, a sprint race, a sprint marathon here, right? It's a never ending thing, but it's really high paced. Like, you know, for 3PLs too, they're competing heavily on how fast they can scale. Shippers are competing. Carriers are competing, vendors are competing. So there's almost like no time for us to say, well, let's take a year or two years to build this product. Um, yeah, you, you definitely have to take a, a, a you know, iterative approach and have an approach that is, uh, um, you know, an ongoing continuous improvement process as opposed to, you know, these very long development uh, cycles. Uh, well, Mark, then, you know, uh, as a way to transition then, I mean, what's next for uh, Blue Grace in terms of your, you know, digital transformation journey and, and how does relationship building fit into the overall strategy and, and how, tech, how can technology partners like Trucker Tools help in, in that effort? Yeah, I think what's next is kind of what's current. You know, I think for us, you know, we're, we're building this stuff internally that makes us, that differentiates us from everyone else. And I think that's what we're focused on. What gives us the biggest value when we say, hey, we need this because it makes us different. Uh, and what does it make us different? Is there something out there that's suitable that we could integrate with and utilize something that A, is already further in development? B, you know, Prasad and I talked about this years before we ever started doing business. We've been talking for probably 10 years and we've only been doing business for a few. And I think the biggest thing that I, I brought to the table for him was solve the adoption problem for me and I'll listen to you because you know, we built some really cool stuff in the past that we just assumed everybody would like and, and, and use. But, you know, the last thing these carriers want is another platform to, to integrate with. And I think it's, it's kind of like once I was comfortable with that answer of you've got enough people using this and you've got enough functionality built into this that I don't need to recreate the wheel. I mean, there's no offense to anyone that's doing this, but, you know, document retrieval is not going to uh, differentiate me from, from anybody else, you know, tracking for, for, for the lack of better is not going to differentiate me, but it's expected. And there are plenty of com companies that do it well, but it's kind of like, who's using it. And, and I think that was important for us. And that's what really kind of made us comfortable with going with, with trucker tools per se, 
is when we basically said, hey, here's, here's the list of companies that we use most frequently, they were able to give us a really good answer on, yeah, we've got a lot a X percentage of these guys already set up. And if not, we will help you kind of onboard them. And so, you know, so for us, from giving from 0% to even just 25%, and then going from 25 to 40 and, and above was a lot easier to do than I've done in the past. And I think that for us is kind of, you know, build what differentiates you, you know, from the marketplace that's not out there, that's not cool, that's not, you know, something that you can actually show a customer and they're super excited about. Uh, and then focus, you know, on you know, finding the other right partners that actually can, you know, integrate with you and, you know, and get, and you can get the value out of that integration. Yeah. And I see that, I see that a lot. I mean, it's kind of creating this ecosystem, right? So there is that, you know, that, that internal innovation that's important and it's part of that, you know, what, what's differentiator, but then who are the right partners to complement and add value to what you're doing internally. And then, you know, in this industry, it's about, you know, scale and adoption, right? So who are those partners already have that scale and adoption, as you noted, you know, that can, you know, number one, provide that critical mass of data or information or insights that we need to, uh, you know, send to our carriers or to our, you know, shipper clients, uh, you know, as well as kind of perhaps create some of these network effects that are, you know, possible out there that can add even, you know, greater value and differentiation, you know, to, uh, to the business. Um, so, so as a way to wrap up, I'll, I'll, I'll stay with you, Mark, and then uh, Prasad, you, you can, you, can uh, you, you know, close the program down. Um, so, so Mark, I mean, when it comes to the intersection of technology and, and building relationships, I mean, what is the biggest lesson learned so far? For us, it's been, you know, I think I, piggybacking off the, the answer I kind of gave before is, you know, don't, don't build something that you think is cool. Build something that someone really kind of wants to use, whether that's internally or externally. Because a happy employee or a happy carrier or a happy driver makes everyone's lives easier. You know, if you, if you are a broker of choice or a 3PL of choice and, um, you know, if you're a shipper of choice or you're a carrier of choice, it really all comes back to that, that, hey, ha, do, we make it, do we make your life easier? Because this is not a very, you know, the concept of what we do is not very, you know, it's not very difficult to understand the actual execution of it is on a consistent basis. And so I think, you know, if you, if you don't take what other people do into account, you're, you're probably not going to, you know, so getting, getting feedback, you know, uh, using people that, that have adoption, you know, all these kind of things kind of lead to that. Whereas I think in the past, we all just wanted to build everything ourselves and build it the way that we wanted it. And, you know, generally speaking, that doesn't work in today's environment. Yeah, that's a great point there at the end is really understanding the perspectives and the, you know, in order to get the buy-in and, and, and the adoption that we talked about earlier, right? You really need to understand the perspective of your internal employees that are going to be living and breathing with this technology day in and day out, as well as the partners that you're interfacing with that are going to be tapping into that technology or leveraging that technology, kind of understanding, you know, does it align with their expectations or with the way they want to receive or send that, you know, information as well. Because you're right. I mean, I think if you don't understand those perspectives and alignments, um, you, you know, you might be investing in the wrong things that may not, uh, you know, achieve the, uh, the desired value. Um, Prasad, your thoughts, uh, you know, lessons learned from the intersection of technology and relationship building. I, I think I like the way Mark titled his wrap up thing. Uh, don't just build technology because it's cool, right? I think it applies to vendors too. Uh, don't just build technology because you think it's going to be cool, right? Um, so going beyond technology from a vendor's point is very much important. What I mean by going beyond is um, obviously technology has to help your customers, you know, brokers and carriers in this case for us, right? But what other value are you bringing to the table, not just technology, right? Um, as a vendor, a lot of people get stuck in, hey, I'm I got this technology, I got this technology. But what, what Mark said earlier was the other part of the equation is adoptability. Who are you bringing to the table? So one of the values for us at, at Strucker Tools has always been, we focused on the carriers. <clears throat> for many years, we stayed with the carriers first before we even introduced our product to brokers. That has helped us add value beyond technology to our customers. So as a vendor, one of the key things people should look at is 
what is your beyond value other than just the base value? The base value comes in as technology. The beyond value comes in the network effect of the carriers, right, for us. So that becomes the true value that we bring to the table for our customers and which could help us go propel much faster. So that, you know, again, going back to the title of our conversation today is, is a, it's all in the relationship world, right? We're built, we are helping um, our carriers and our brokers build that relationship through us, through our platform. Um, you got to stay focused to that. I mean, it's easier to go chase the shiny object, but stay focused with it. So those are my two, two suggestions uh, as we wrap up. Uh, look for beyond technology, uh, look for, uh, um, you know, stay focused on what you bring to the table. Well, you know, a lot, a lot of great points. And I, I, I think that, you know, like I always like to say, we always manage to scratch the surface on, on these topics, but I think both of you provided some great uh, insights and perspectives and, and advice on, on this. And I guess the main takeaway is that, uh, yes, technology and relationships go, go hand in hand and they reinforce, you know, each other and, and don't ignore, don't uh, overlook the importance of technology, of, uh, of relationships in the overall, um, you know, puzzle of what it takes to succeed in, in, in this industry. Uh, so with that, uh, you know, Mark and Prasad, uh, again, thank you for making the time to be with us today. Thanks for having thank me. You. Uh, I want to thank those of you uh, that joined us. If you're watching this episode on demand, uh, either at the Trucker Tools website or on Talking Logistics, and you've got a question or a comment for Mark or Prasad, and uh, you can post a question there, and uh, I'm sure they'll be more than happy to respond via that medium. Again, thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you in a future episode of Talking Logistics. Have a great day.